d'avoir bravé tout ce qu'il a fallu braver pour venir ici. Et merci de nous apporter ces nouvelles-là du, du Brésil. Thank you so much for making it uh, to here today and for bringing us uh, this great piece of uh, Brazilian cinema. Thank you. Uh, we are very happy to be here. Thank you for coming to the screening. So we are very happy. So thank you so much. All right. So this is your comeback here at the Director's Point Night because you were here in 2012 with your short film. Uh, this film was shot in 2019, uh, a few months after the election of Bolsonaro. Uh, so this film can be seen as a dystopia but also there are some elements of the, uh, the, the current context. So how did you assemble these uh, elements together and how did you inject also the, the myth of Medusa? Ah, okay. So uh, <laughs> I start to develop this project in 2015. That was when the first idea came. Because in Brazil, you could feel a conservative rise since 2013. People going to the streets, wearing the, the football team, clothes that are very nationalist and asking for the end of corruption. And, uh, when, and, uh, and in 2015, I heard some, I read some news about girls ganging up to beat another girl. And uh, there was like a series of news with this element in common. And I found this type of news not only in Brazil, but also one in Argentina, one in Chile, that girls could get together to beat another girl. And it's uh, pretty much about social media, but mostly because they consider that girl a promiscuous woman and they have to be punished. And it was very important to them like to cut the hair, to cut the face, so the girl looked ugly, ugly to them. So when I read the news, the first thing I remember was Medusa myth. Because uh, in, in the myth, Medusa was a beautiful priest. And there is some divergence in the myth. One version she was seduced by Poseidon, in the other version she was raped. But at the end of the day, when Athena, that the virgin goddess, find out, she decided she has to punish Medusa for the loss of her purity. So she transformed Medusa in this ugly creature with the, with the serpent hair that her eyes could froze in the others. And so uh, I started to think that the basis of the, the Occidental civilization, even if Brazil is a peripheral part of the Occidental civilization, has this idea of a woman somehow having to control the other woman. And, and that's mostly because to have to control themselves. I learned to talk about control and the lack of control, and one person trying to control the other, and how we can be affected by the structural machismo. And, uh, and also other, other, other influence I had from Brazil and the news was the, a church that was putting together an army of boys, uh, 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 not like not of boys, of young men, and that really <laughs> scared me a little bit. So that was another inspiration for the boys you flew. Okay, so you worked on uh, Anita's previous film, uh, uh, How did you work together? And uh, uh, Anita, did you, did you already have money in mind when you were writing the film? And uh, were the two experiences different when working together? Bonjour. Uh, it was a very good process. Uh, our, our first movie it was a really nice experience and now it was really great. Anita is a very good director and she knows exactly how to ask to the actor what she wants and she was very careful since the beginning when she gave me the script and she said, oh, I'm a white woman writing from your perspective so if you have anything to say, if you have a problem or something like that, you can, you can speak to me and, and I think that's really good. Uh, it's a, she's very careful. And yes, it was different. I'm older, and uh, I was I was 15 when I did Kill Me Please. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and it was a good experience. Um, I was free to experiment and try new stuff and discover what is interesting to me and stuff like that. And, and she's always there. So it was good. So I met Nadi when I when I did open calls for Kill Me Please, my first feature in 2013, and. Uh, it was amazing to work with her there. And I wrote to Medusa script having my in mind. And since then I have been like observing how she grow and she, and she has also a great YouTube channel that she do with her friends. She's also in cinema film school now. So it was like an amazing, amazing experience and I'm very happy that Mary, Mary 
is able to be here with uh, Alexander Field. Uh, Mary Pop, there is a, uh, it's a genre film also, it's very musical. Uh, so, uh, what have you been watching in the last 20 years that, that might have influenced you? And what about the music in the film also? Okay, so from the visual aspect, actually, my first inspiration was, was from paintings. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it all started in 2013. I was traveling with a short film and I saw an exhibition in Musée d'Orsay about romantic. No art romanticism, something like that, and it really struck me. And especially some paintings of uh, Franz von Stuff. I don't know if I said the name, his name right, sorry. Uh, one called the Sin, another called Salome. And I really like the use of uh, light and dark and, uh, and the colors and the color palettes. Okay, but regarding cinema, I think my main inspiration was Suspiria by Dario Argento and uh, all the seven films that I really, really am passionate about. So Suspiria, Carrie, and I really want to have all these colors and, uh, and to shoot in a way that uh, I'm not looking to show life that is, but in a fantastic point of view with colors that we don't have in our day-to-day -day life. So Suspiria, Carrie, and I uh, also like some musicals from the 70s, like all the jazz. They all inspired me so much for, to construct the visual aspect of the film. And uh, because of that, we shot it in anamorphic lenses, First, uh, we try some cinevision lenses, but uh, couldn't afford in Brazil. But but to do the, the anamorphic lenses, and and I'm very happy like to pay homage to these filmmakers that I really love. Of course, Suspiria, is, I think, is very out there. But in part about about and uh, there's a part about the, the songs, right? Okay, so uh, I think one day I have to do a musical. But uh, for Medusa, we uh, I don't know what. Uh, uh, the, the, the church song was the first, I wrote the, the church songs and also we started rehearsing the film with, with, the, with, the, with the girls rehearsing the, the church songs. And uh, for me it was very important that uh, the church music have a pop feeling because it's something that's happening a lot in Brazil. And uh, for the, how do I say, the, the diegetic music, I work with Bernardo Zeda, he, that's a, he works with me since my first short film, and he composed a lot of songs for the film. And for the rest of the soundtrack, I uh, really want to update the Baby Two. And then uh, I work with a singer in Brazil, and, uh, and a friend did the production. Um, and Mari, sings, Mari also sang a version of uh, Wish on a Star. If you like it, it's and uh, you have also this amazing girl in the cast, Carol, that plays Vivian. She really helped rehearsing. She sings the, the song in the in the credits, and uh, and I also for I also put two, two Brazilian songs that I love: the one in the party from Marina Lima, that's a very famous pop song in Brazil, and the other one also a video from the party that's a music from Caetano Veloso. That are another artist recorded for us a new version. This moment of catharsis when they're screaming, I just, you know, I get goosebumps, I start to cry because it was so cathartic, it was so big. So I wanted uh, to hear from you too how it feels, you know, how do you see this explosion of, you know, <laughs> we just all want to do. So uh, about the hospital, I think my first idea, because I, I, I wrote the, 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 the film before the 2018 elections, then I made some adaptations. But this idea of, I felt that everyone was a little bit numb in Brazil, that we're not reacting, that was this conservative rise coming and coming, and that we were most paralyzed and they didn't know how to, what to do. So that's why I came up with the idea of these bodies, because I feel a little bit paralyzed, and, and many people there, like, there were a lot of things going, this guy getting elected, and, and, we, and, a lot, and, a, and a part of the society was what can I, like it is, you know? So that's why, why I came with the idea of this hospital. But the idea, I am the nurses that they work there. For me, they have uh, almost like a fantastic body allegory, and they represent life and joy. They're a little bit like uh, in, the, in the outside of the, the society that the, the girls and the boys in the church represent. All the ending, I think there, there are many reasons for the girl, for the woman screaming, but I think the first one is uh, also about Medusa, because when you think about Medusa, remember the Caravaggio Medusa, and she's screaming. But she's not screaming afraid, she's pissed, she's angry. And uh, I want to work with this idea of this relief. 
They are screaming, but they are not afraid. They are putting outside all the repression that not only the repression they feel, but like in generations of women. So I, will, I want to work with this idea of the scream as a release. And also to play a little bit of the idea of women being crazy, being hysterical, and all this bullshit that we are used to. <laughs> used to say, this thing up there. And, and also, uh, my first feature, it has a more melancholic ending. So for me, this film, this is my version of a happy ending. Because for me, because uh, I try to point for a solution. That's like the the, the woman and them they get together. Even if during the film they fight, the, the friendships are, can be toxic. At the end, they stand one for the other, and they are together, and they are fighting, and they are releasing all this anger. Okay. It was amazing to record it. It was so, I also got chills and also cried and we did a lot of times and every time just get better. And at the end I was like, uh, feeling really great. Uh, there's a lot of important things in the movie, but I think at the end of the, uh, at the end of it, it's about finding freedom and uh, being allowed to be yourself or find yourself and, and stuff like that. But uh, I hope that in the end, uh, everyone who's watching feels that the want to scream too, you know? <laughs> Ask them, you don't need to scream, you can just do like, ah, because what's in the middle of the shooting, I don't want them to lose their voices. <laughs> but then they decided to scream, and, <laughs> and they all scream, and the sound, there is a real sound that we, we uh, kept during the shooting. <laughs> Thank you. Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.